So now we can look at some units of measurement, and we're mostly going to be using the metric system here. So if you're not familiar with that, you will be by the end of this chapter. So we have some base units, which are things like the kilogram for mass, or when you're talking about the length of something, we're going to be using meters. Time will be in seconds, temperature is in Kelvin, and we'll have a couple of different temperature um, scales. We'll be able to convert from Fahrenheit, which you're probably used to, to Celsius, and then Kelvin. Uh, we won't really talk about moles until chapter 13, and you won't see amps until chem 2, so you don't have to worry about those. Uh, so what we're going to do is take these base units and then add prefixes to help us convert from, you know, depending on what we're, we're, we're trying to talk about. Um, if we have something really big, we might use these prefixes. Um, you, know, you may have heard terabytes or gigabytes when you talk about memory in your, um, in your phone or your... Um, not your phone, <laughs> maybe your computer, um, or you know, maybe you've heard of a kilometer or a centimeter. Um, so these are getting smaller. So down here you have small things. Um, right, so this is small. And then over on the top there it's a little bit bigger. Okay. So there are just a few prefixes I really want you to have memorized. So I want you to know um, milli and uh, kilo and centi. So those three you should know those really really well. The rest you can kind of use this table to help you figure that out. So again these are small down here so something like a nano like a nanosecond is you know one times ten to the nine seconds. A microsecond is one times ten to the negative six seconds. So you're going to add these prefixes to your base units and then you'll get a, uh, a different way of talking about numbers. Um, so a kilometer is, um, there, are, there are a thousand meters in one kilometer, that sort of thing. I have a, a scale on the, on the next page. Um, let's see how we can kind of apply these. So we have 10 to the negative 9 grams. That's the same as uh, a nanogram. So you come up here and you see, all right, 10 to the negative 9. So this is a nanogram. Nanogram or um, just an you know, N G. 10 to the negative 6 seconds, so you go up here and you see, alright, negative 6 seconds there, that's a micro. So this is a microsecond. Or a mu s. And then 10 to the negative 3 meters is a millimeter. Or an mm. You can see on this next page, this kind of highlights all the things that you really should have memorized. That one meter is a thousand millimeters, right? So imagine that meter stick, and there are a thousand little tick marks on it. Each one of those is a millimeter, and there's a thousand millimeters in one meter. Um, there are a hundred centimeters in one meter, and then if you put a thousand of those meter sticks together, then you get a kilometer. And so kilometers are a, a lot bigger than a meter. So a thousand meters in a kilometer. Uh, so kilometers are things that you run, like a 5K. Um, later on in this chapter, we'll be converting these to, to like inches and, and um, miles and those sorts of things. So you'll be able to relate these meters to things that maybe you have a better feel for. Like a meter is about like a yard. A uh, yard is like three feet. Um, so you know if you want to approximate it that way. We're going to use exact numbers, but just to get a feel for how big these are. Um, you can so that was for length for mass you can do the same thing there's a thousand milligrams in one gram there's a hundred centigrams in one gram and then there are a thousand grams in one kilogram there's a thousand anythings in one kilo anything so there's a thousand liters in one kiloliter there's a hundred centi things in one base unit so there's a hundred centiliter centiliters in one liter there's a thousand milli things in one of your base units so a thousand milliliters in one liter so those are our some of our units that we're going to be using. Let's talk about temperature a little bit more, and we'll do a little bit of math. So temperature, you know what that is. It's a, a measure of like how hot or cold something is. Um, it also determines the direction of heat flow. So heat flows from hot stuff to cold stuff. So if you feel something and it's hot, um, that heat is being transferred from whatever was hot to your hand. If you feel something and it was cold, then the heat's leaving your hand and it's um, being transferred to whatever was cold. We're gonna talk more about heat transfer in chapter five. Right now, we're just gonna look at temperature and how we can convert from one unit to the other. So we have three different temperature scales here. Fahrenheit is probably what you're the most used to. Um, when you take your temperature, your body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 
you can convert that to Celsius. And we have some equations down here uh, that are going to help us do that. And we'll do some practice examples as well. Um, but you know, in Celsius, your body temperature is about 37.0 degrees Celsius. Celsius is based on the boiling point and freezing point of water. So water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, it boils at 100. So the difference, that change in temperature here between freezing and boiling is 100 degrees. 100 degrees Celsius. Um, when you get to Kelvin, all you're doing is adding 273 to any Celsius degree. Um, so degree Celsius zero over here is 273 Kelvin. Here it's 100, there it's 373 Kelvin. And the difference again is 100 degrees between freezing and boiling in Kelvin and freezing and boiling in Celsius. So the change, this is important especially in chapter 5, the change in temperature in Celsius is the same as the change in temperature in Kelvin. You have different units. It's just Kelvin is kind of shifted higher on the scale by 273. Um, also notice that you have degrees Celsius, degrees Fahrenheit, but Kelvin doesn't have a degree sign. Kelvin is its own unit. You don't say degrees Kelvin. All right, so here Kelvin is degrees Celsius plus 273.15. Uh, you'll notice sometimes we don't have that 1.5. We'll talk about that when we get to sig figs, that if you don't have um, the decimal places, then you don't have to worry about that 0.15. And Fahrenheit, and you may see different versions of this equation, uh, 1.8 times the change in Celsius is um, Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. This minus 32, that comes from you know, trying to zero out the, the freezing point here. So it's 32, this one's zero, there's a 32 degree difference there. And then the 1.8 really comes from, you have a 180 degree difference on the Fahrenheit scale, you only have a 100 degree difference over here on the Celsius scale. Uh, 180 over 100 gives you the 1.8. So this number, these aren't just magic numbers. You can derive this equation if you wanted to. You should memorize both of these. You should have these memorized and really understand how to use those. So let's go through a few examples. All right, so we have a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius. Can we get that into Kelvin and Fahrenheit? So Kelvin is pretty easy, right? So we would just take the, um, we have Kelvin is just the temperature in Celsius plus 273, right? So we would just take 31 plus 273, and that's going to give us what? 304 Kelvin. And then for part B, if you want to find the Fahrenheit, you would say uh, the equation is 1.8 times the Celsius temperature is the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. So we would take our 1.8 times 31. We're looking for the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32. So when you work all this out, you want to do this in baby steps. So take a minute, multiply 1.8 times 32, and then you're going to add 1.8 times 31, and then you're going to add 32 on both sides. So you have 55.8 is equal to Tia minus 32, and then you want to add 32 here. Add 32. Ooh, ran out of space. Uh, TF is going to be 80. Is that 87.8? And then we'll round up to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. 